All right, now that we've introduced the concept of fracture, and we've said that both brittle and ductile exist, what's the difference between those? Well, anytime you have fracture or a separation of a component into two different bodies, it always has to have two components, right? There has to be crack initiation, a crack, you know, a separation has to begin, and then there has to be crack propagation, meaning that crack has to go all the way through the material. Now, these are two different instances, and the two different types of fracture, brittle and ductile, they experience these processes differently. In ductile fracture, you have plastic deformation, right? If you're pulling on a material, it deforms prior to breaking, right? But in a brittle material, you're pulling on it and all of a sudden it just fractures and it doesn't give any sign of it breaking. It's not like it elongates, for example, or necks down, for example, it just fractures, okay? Now, because plastic deformation can occur, imagine what it can do to the crack tip. If you've got a material here and it has a sharp crack in it, well, if you're able to deform your material, this sharp crack tip can get blunted as this slowly deforms out, right? And as it blunts the crack tip, um, that can slow the rate of crack propagation from traveling through it. But if your material is brittle and it can't deform, that crack starts and then it just travels all the way through once a critical flaw length has been reached, which we'll talk about in a moment, okay? So which one's preferred? Um, if you're trying to prevent failure, then you'd prefer ductile, trend, uh, ductile failure, right? Take, for example, the campfire example. We showed you this L bracket, and you could see that there was deformation occurring. It was wearing. It was stretching. So they knew that something was happening. They did it over here first. They noticed it, and that's why they replaced it with this bracket. And that's why the bracket didn't fail. Now, why they didn't look at the C hook and think the same thing, it's time to replace that, is a different question. Okay? Uh, generally speaking, you can see the difference in ductile versus brittle fracture by the fractography, which is looking at the surface. Consider the surface right here. Here's two different materials, one that uh, failed in a ductile manner. That's this one to the left. It formed a cup and a cone, so the cup and cone. Uh, that's because the flaw is able to move as it travels through the material because deformation is possible. And then you have brittle. In this case, there's a little flaw right here on the surface. You can see it, and then that traveled through the material very quickly, right? you would prefer the one that has deformation because that allows you to see it coming. And if you look at fractography, there's other things to look for. If you zoomed in with a microscope, you'd see in one material it's sort of clear facets, so it's generally flat. But in another material, there's lots of this roughness and cups and cones at the micro level. So this would be ductile and this would be brittle because, again, it's slicing through big grains of the material, whereas in the case over here, the crack is traveling around the grains, and that's in a brittle fashion, okay? In brittle materials, you typically see some general hallmarks. For example, you'll very often see the crack flaw, right? That's where it initially started. The initial flaw was right there. And then you end up with a mirror region, which is this region immediately in the vicinity of it. Eventually, that turns into the mist region and the hackle region with these larger lines pointing towards it, right? So these are very characteristic. You can see them in lots of brittle material failures. Like, take a look at this piece of glass. You can clearly see that the origin is right here, but then you see these long lines. Again, those are your hackle regions. This is your mist and your then your mirror region, right? And you can see that the critical flaw, probably where this thing broke, if it was dropped or if it had something inside of it, was right there. Um, I encourage you to start looking at materials that you've broken around uh, yourself. You'll notice that these also are present in most of the materials if it was a ductile material. And if it was brittle, you'll see that the surface is generally rather rough.